In this video, we will work backwards, starting with the z-interval, such as you might find reported in a research journal, and from that, produce the statistics that ended up producing the z-interval. This is a common thing that you might want to do uh, because you will often see z-intervals reported somewhere, say in a research journal. So in this section, we will start with the given z-interval, work backwards to interpret the interval, and to recover the statistics that were used to build it. So for example, suppose a biology journal reports a 95% confidence interval for the mean time spent foraging for food by a certain species of bird as 2.53 hours to 3.12 hours. They also report that they track 45 birds of the species. See if you can figure out how to do these things here probably should be able to figure this out on your own. So let me give you a chance to try that. Press pause now and come back when you're ready. Okay, well the first thing is the easiest, I guess. The sample size is just flat out told to you here, 45. How about the margin of error and the mean? Well, remember that the margin of error is uh, half of the distance between these two ends. The, the length of this interval is twice the margin of error. So if we just find the length of that interval by subtracting and then divide by two, we get the margin of error. Remember the mean is exactly in the middle of this interval, the midpoint of the interval, so it's the same distance from both ends. How do you find a number that's the same distance between, uh, halfway in between two numbers, same distance? Well, you just average them, add them up and divide by two. Uh, find the mean of those two. So in this case, the sample size is given to be 45. The margin error is half the width of the interval, so it is the upper limit minus the lower limit divide by 2. Uh, be sure you subtract first, then divide. So that's uh, 3.12 minus 2.53 divided by 2. Divided by two. And so that is uh, 0 0.295 hours, which should seem to be exactly halfway in the middle of that interval. The sample mean, well, uh, I'm sorry, that's not halfway in between. That's, the, uh, that's the, the margin of error. The sample mean is halfway in between, which is upper limit plus lower limit divided by 2. 3.12 plus 2.53 divided by 2. Add first, then divide. That's 2.825, which is exactly halfway in the middle there. And, of course, if you do 2.825 minus the 0.295, you should get the 2.53. Uh, that's the mean minus the margin of error for the lower one. And if you do the mean plus the margin of error, that should give you the upper one. So 2.825 plus 0.295 should be 3.12. Okay, next, how about the standard error of the mean and the standard deviation of the population? Can you, did you figure out how to do those? Well, the standard error of the mean is the... Uh, standard deviation of the x bar values. Now remember we have this basic formula that the standard error, or let's say that the margin of error, E, is the standard error, or sigma of the x bars, times this inverse norm. Inverse norm of 1 plus confidence level over 2 uh, from a standard normal. Well, solving this for the standard error, or sigma of the x bars, we just get E divided by this inverse norm. Well, we just figured out E, that was the 0.3, uh, okay, something, something's out of whack here. Let me check this. Here we go. The margin of error was uh, 0 0.295, which is what we found on the, over here, 0.295. And so that's what we put in for E here. That's correct. And then the confidence level was said to be 0.95. So 1.95, or 1 plus 0.95, divided by 2 is what we put in here. 1 plus the confidence level, divided by 2. So anyway, that's 0.975 if you want to figure that out uh, by itself, or you just type it in like this, 1.95 divided by 2. Anyway, you work this out on your calculator, and you get 0 0.1505, etc. And so that is something sometimes called the standard error of the mean, or... Um, just a standard error, but what it really is, and probably a better name for it, is the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means, the sigma of the x-bar values. 
Well, what's the standard deviation of the individual uh, in the population? Well, remember that the sigma of the x bars is the sigma of the x's divided by square root of n. So if we want to solve for the sigma, it's just square root of n times the sigma of the x bars. Well, we figured out the sigma of this x bars with this 0.15 something. Just turn around and take that and multiply by square root of 45 to get uh, just, just uh, slightly bigger than 1 there for the uh, standard deviation of the population. Okay, so by now you should be ready for homework set 4, problem number 10. Try to work that before you go on to the next video.